What's going on everyone? Welcome back to Offbeat Motors. I'm Corey and today we're going to be talking about my Jeep Gladiator and particularly the few things that I don't like about it. So just like my Challenger, there wasn't really a lot that I didn't like with this vehicle when I first got it. Um, I didn't actually not like any real one thing about it so i had to really think about it of what it was that i didn't like with that being said now that i've had the vehicle for a couple of months you know i let it mull over use the vehicle for a little bit i put 2075 miles on it at this point and there are a few things that i have come up with that i don't particularly care for hate such a strong word because they're not really things that i hate 100 percent they're things you can get along with and more than likely something the aftermarket industry can fix so let's get right into it and the very first thing that I do not like about the gladiator or I dislike about the gladiator is the fact that there is no dead pedal down here to the left of the pedals don't get me wrong I totally understand why there isn't one there in the first place and it's the fact that these footwells are not very big to begin with and when you introduce the third pedal for the standard transmission vehicles there's no real place for it anyways so I understand why they didn't make it specifically for the automatics uh, it's just easier to do one for both styles and be done with it it's you know in the long run it's all about expenses and keeping them lower to you know hit a price points and stuff but with that being said, the aftermarket industry does step in and there are a lot of options out there for you to add a dead pedal. Um, I'm going to be doing a video of a dead pedal install because I did order one through Amazon. Uh, I have it at the house. I just haven't had a chance to put it in yet as the, at the time of this recording, but that's going to be the next video that I put out on the Jeep Gladiator. Not the next video in general, but the next video of the Gladiator. Uh, so expect that in probably about a week or so from this video or so because depending upon how life goes um, I also have to have time to do it and right now at the time of this recording it's 106 degrees out so I'm definitely not going to be out putting a dead pedal in my vehicle today it's got to cool off just a little bit and the one thing I want to point out is that these are not in any particular order from the least hated to the most hated or the most hated to the least hated it's pretty much random and it's just what I came up with um, so let's move on to number two the second thing that I dislike about the vehicle are the windshield wipers and what I mean by that is that when I first bought the vehicle I took a trip down to Houston from Dallas and it was pouring rain for most of the time uh, torrential downpours and the speed of the windshield wipers are a little to be desired for the other thing I don't like is the fact that they don't have the rain sensing option on this one. Uh, I didn't have it on my Challenger either. I did have it on my Volvo before that and my Mini Cooper before that. So it's not like it's one of those things that's I have to have, but it'd be nice to have that with the windshield wipers, but I'm just grouping it with the windshield wipers. Uh, but mainly it's the speed. Um, high is not the highest I've ever seen in my life. Um, I'm not sure why they didn't make it go any faster, but when I was driving down the highway at a reduced, considerable reduced speed because you couldn't see anything and everybody else was going slower as well, um, you just couldn't clear the window enough to even get any decent visibility at all. Um, I've been in much worse torrential downpours. Uh, I was in one a uh, few months back with my Challenger and the speed of that wipe, wiper system kept up just fine. These just seemed like they move too slow, um, even on high. It, it's, it's like the high speed should be the medium and there should be one just a little bit faster than that. So it would be nice if the, it went a little faster. Now there really isn't anything that the aftermarket can do to fix that problem, but there is something you can do. You can ceramic coat the windshield, which is going to be hyd hydrophobic, I think is the word, um, where it will just, you know, dispense the water, beat it right off, um, or you can do Rain-X. Rain-X has to be applied periodically. Ceramic coating doesn't have to be supplied nearly as often. Um, so that's two of the options you have. Um, I just went out and bought some Rain-X. Um, I tried it out. I didn't really care for it, so I think I'm going to end up just ceramic coating the windshield after I clean it because right now it's just covered in freaking bugs and you can't do that. It's got to be spotless. So uh, I think that's going to be the option I end up going to solve that issue. The third gripe I had with this vehicle when I first bought it is 
I got the Willys edition. Um, and this may be fine on some of the other models, but when you start getting up into the higher range models, there's not a lot of chrome on the vehicles. And in the antenna that they use, it's chrome. It was the only piece of chrome that was on this truck. And it just looked awful. It stood out. It was ultra tall, uh, comparatively speaking to the antenna that I ended up buying, which, i.e. the aftermarket stepped in on this, of course, another thing. But I ended up going with a 13-inch uh, antenna. It, it was black. It's rubbery, so it moves around and stuff like that. So it served two purposes. It, it cleaned up the look of the vehicle. I don't have that one piece of chrome sticking out like a sore thrum, thumb on this, and it's black, which blends in a lot better with this vehicle. And I also don't have to take it off if I was to ever go through an automatic car wash, which I don't plan on doing. But if I'm out on a trip somewhere and I need to get the vehicle washed, it may be an option. So that's a good thing to have. Um, also, if you're out on the trail, you don't have to worry about it catching anything because it's a lot shorter and whatnot. So some of the branches won't catch it. So that's number three. All right, so number four, um, lack of storage. And by that, I mean the lack of storage for a place to actually put your phone. Um, what I thought was a phone storage holder is not really a phone storage holder. It turned out that it's actually designed to hold your key, even though I hold my key in my pocket at all times. And my iPhone doesn't really fit that well in it anyways. Some of the smaller phones may, but mine does not. You do have the slot in front of the sh uh, shifters here, and um, that's just kind of an inconvenient location to have it, so I didn't really care for that. Didn't really care for having it down in the doors, um, or i.e. my door. So the aftermarket came in clutch once again, and I did a video of an install of the um, phone storage rack thingamabob doohickey on top of uh, the dashboard here, which was super simple and easy. It was like $69 something. It was, so it was cheap. It's very inexpensive. Holds two phones and it's holding the GoPro that I'm using to film this video with right now. When it comes to regular storage, you have a lot of places to put things, especially under the rear seat. Um, the club box, not the biggest thing in the world, but you do have a good uh, center console here that holds quite a bit of stuff. Um, so there are storage options for things other than a cell phone. My only gripe was with the cell phone location of where to hold it. You know, most car companies nowadays, they take that into consideration. They have wireless charging spots and everything else like that, because let's face it, everybody has a cell phone. All right, and for Mambo number five, the fifth thing that I dislike or don't really care or don't agree with, I should say, um, with my Jeep Gladiator, it holds true with pretty much any level of Gladiator that you get. Um, and it has to do with the seven inch infotainment system that I chose with this. This is the middle of the road one. I didn't get with the 8.4 and I did not go with the five inch. I went with the middle of the road because um, I thought that's what I needed. It was the best bang for my buck for what I was looking for. Um, I'm not a hardcore off-roader. So the seven inch was fine with me because it doesn't come with the, um, the off-road pages. It would be nice. And, and this is one of those things I knew it wasn't coming with it. And this is just, it would be nice if it did come with it um, or having it as an available option to add it to the seven inch. I don't know if it can be added with a, like the taser mini, the taser or anything like that. I haven't looked into that, but I don't think it is. And I think it's only available on the 8.4. And I totally get why, because the 8.4, you're paying more money for it. It is an upgrade. You're going to get more features with the upgraded system over the one below it, i.e. the seven inch. So, but with that being said, you do get some of the functionality in the instrument cluster on this vehicle. Um, the pitch and roll is available and um, so it's nice that you are able to get some of the information you just don't have it over here and you don't have nearly as much information as you would if you had the 8.4 with the off-road pages on it so it's just a stupid little gripe it I knew it going into it that it wasn't coming with it but it would be nice if it's able to be added or you know even for like a hundred bucks extra you can have it on the seven inch but it is what it is so but it is cool that they still give you some of the information in the instrument cluster now number six 
And number seven, the, the two final things that I have a gripe about with this particular vehicle. Um, and it's not the Jeep Gladiator across all models. This is specifically geared towards this being a Willys. And it may hold true for some of the other models as well. But particularly with the Willys, because that's what I have, you cannot get the max tow package with this vehicle. It's just not offered on this trim level. I don't know why. I think it has to do with the fact that you're using off-road tires and you do not have all season tires. And it has to do with the suspension. Uh, which in turn leads me to number seven. And the final one is you also do not have the option of adding the 410 gears because the 410 gears are for the max tow packaged vehicles and max tow is not available. Now, with that being said, I do have a trailer hitch. I just cannot tow over 7,000 pounds with this like you could with the max tow. Um, I don't remember exactly what it is, but I think it's more along the lines of 4,500 pounds that this vehicle could tow with the tow package, non-max tow. Could be wrong. It's like 45, 47, something like that. So, kind of sucks. I wish I could tow more, but is v6 so do i really want to be towing 7,000 pounds probably not the uh, gas mileage is already atrocious in this vehicle um even though it's a mile per uh what is it a, a one mile per gallon better than what i got in my challenger around town uh and that was a v8 um so it's not that much better but it's definitely better but towing um from what i understand the mileage just is atrocious um it's i think there people are getting like nine miles to the gallon when towing so it's a trade-off it is what it is um i had an f-150 on my way when i moved from uh new york to texas i towed a u-haul trailer behind it and i got i think it was 11 miles to the gallon at the most at one point between Phillip. that's not really something that i was expecting to have really good gas mileage when i'm towing and i do plan on doing some towing uh in the future with this thing just i not like seven thousand pounds worth but i want to go camping and stuff like that i want to get a travel trailer to tow behind it and i'm very limited on what i can get for what I, what we're actually looking for um we're looking for a bunkhouse, possibly a slide out, but it's extremely hard to find a slide out that will fit within the towing parameters of this vehicle. So those are my only gripes about the vehicle. Uh, they're not 100% hate it type situations. Internet pretty much steps in. And we, even with the towing, I'm sure the internet can, or not the internet, but the aftermarket can step in here. And uh, I can put 410 gears into this. I can upgrade the suspension. I can put all season tires on this if I wanted to. But at that point, why would it, why didn't I just buy like the Sport S with the max tow package or the Texas Trail, which I think came with a max tow package? You know, that's kind of the trade off I got with this. So those are it. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Um, these are my opinions about my vehicle in particular and just a couple of the things that I don't care about it, but I live with and can solve most of it. Um, don't forget to leave a like, comment away. Follow me over on um, Instagram at uh, Offbeat Motors. The link down in the description for that. And I will catch you guys next time around. Well, hopefully the audio is better this time around than it was last video that I made with the Jeep because I know I got few complaints on that and that's down to the fact that my um, wireless audio did not work at that point uh, it's working now so hopefully at least it didn't when I did my daughter's video it worked fine in there so I'm hoping it works now